Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Prof Charles, and today we're doing another TSO video. This is a little bit different. This is the SpongeBob character tier list. I've seen a couple episodes of SpongeBob, never really been into it, never really watched it all that much, but I had most of my friends were huge fucking SpongeBob fans, so they would constantly be fucking talking about the show, so I know a decent bit about it. Not really, but a little bit. Okay, so. I can't believe he actually made a video like this. So it let's check it out. In partnership with curiosity. Yo, hear that little <sharp inhale> fucking do that shit from time to time. I'm meaning to fucking. Okay. I've been trying to figure out how to do an ocean tier list or fish tier list for a while now, but the problem is there's just too many potential builds to include in a single video. So what better way to do it than to artificially restrict the scope of the video to the most well-known fictional server of all, Bikini Bottom. While not a real place, the characters are based on real animals that have their own special abilities and signature moves. Oh, okay, so this is not gonna be... So he's gonna do the real animals from Spongebob. Okay. Which even affect the plot of individual Spongebob episodes. Interesting. So which residents of Bikini Bottom and their real-life counterparts are the best in the current Coral Reef meta? As always, we'll start from the bottom and move up from there. So, in F tier, we have the Underwater Squirrel build. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think squirrels are bottom tier in the Arboreal meta. Wait, there, there is an actual underwater, un, underwater squirrel in real life? Like an actual animal? Did they, they have one of the highest mobility bonuses in the game in forests, and their teeth deal bonus damage to structures, making them excellent at bending wooden environments to their will both in forests and suburbs. However, in the reef meta, squirrels are absolutely bottom tier. And this is evidenced by Sandy's many obvious difficulties overcoming pretty basic properties of an underwater playthrough. Sandy's powerful regenerating teeth, while normally a major asset, would actually be a huge liability in an underwater playthrough. Not only are they unable to deal any damage when stuck behind a glass helmet, but regenerating teeth eventually start to deal damage to the player when they go unused for a long time. Oof. So, Sandy being forced to wear a suit for most of her playthrough is hugely detrimental. The rest of Sandy's stats are solid, but they're contingent more on her suit than anything else. For example, she's got really high defense due to her armor, but a single hit strong enough to crack her armor would easily mean game over for her, meaning she essentially has an HP of 1. Her other best stat is that she's got high intelligence, but there are far better intelligence builds to play in the Reef meta, so her tier placement remains low. Yo, I, actually I don't want to waste too much time formula. discussing the Underwater Squirrel that build, since it's the most unrealistic build in Bikini Bottom. So, let's move on to D tier, where we have the Ocean Snail build. Now, there are Ocean Snails that I consider high tier, like the Cone Snails, which have venomous spears. However, it's pretty clear that Gary is not one of these, and is instead a much more basic jack-of-all-trades style snail. Sea snails have exceptionally high defense levels, but not much else. They're nearly invincible while in their defensive stance, except against players with armor-piercing abilities. But, as we'll see, those abilities aren't uncommon in the reef meta, and as a result, sea snails have bad matchups against much of the rest of this list. Jesus. In C tier, we have the crustaceans, fuck? which seem to comprise a large percentage of Oy. the bikini bottom player base, including Mr. Krabs, Larry, and Plankton. <laughs> and yes, Plankton is most likely a type of copepod, which is a small crustacean. Kobe. All three of these Rest take the peace, basic crustacean build and modify it for their own specific playstyle. Mr. Krabs sticks pretty close to the basic crustacean build, maintaining high defensive stats with relatively low mobility. <laughs> the Shit Krabs intellect. armor is great at blocking most attacks, although again, armor piercing abilities are fairly prevalent in the reef meta, so it's certainly not a foolproof strategy. The Krabs claws, while not as powerful as the lobster, Aye. are still great at Aye. crushing and grabbing other players, something even Mr. Krabs uses to his advantage at times. The lobster is a more offensive take on the crustacean build, having claws that can deal devastating damage in a single- Bro, I've cooked so many fucking lobsters in my life. I don't know if I've told you guys, but I've worked in a clam bake company. So we did like every Saturday and Sunday, we do like parties with like fucking 200, 300 people, a couple of those. So every party was like fucking 400, 500 lobsters. I've counted so many fucking lobsters. I got stinked by a fucking lobster once. That shit hurts like a motherfucker. Fuck that guy. I mean, he died later on, so fuck him. In the show, we see Larry depicted as the strongest Bikini Bottom resident, and I have to agree, in raw power and for his size, he's number one. Damn, the Larry. Kobe Pot, the, the creature that Plankton is based on, obviously lacks any form of defense wow. and has extremely low HP, being easily defeated by stray blows that weren't even directed at him. 
The Kobe Pod's best stat would be stealth, which helps Plankton in a lot of his efforts to invade enemy bases, but also frequently ends up hurting him when he's trampled on because he was stepped on by a player that didn't detect him. One special ability I don't see mentioned in the show is the Kobe Pod's team strategy with the bacterium, Vibrio Cholera, which causes Cholera, a damage over time effect that has scored countless wins against entire settlements of human players. Oh. While all three of these rank about the same on my tier list, I think it's safe to say that the lobster would win most frequently in a duel Jesus. with the other crustaceans. But how about Crab vs. Plankton? Countless times, Mr. Krabs is depicted defeating Plankton in battle, but only once is this battle a legal one rather than a physical one. And while I generally agree with the show's depiction of the physical battles, I can't really comment on how a battle would play out if it took place in a courtroom. Who is the man in the suit? <gasps> Who is this guy? Tirzu needs me. Objection! Legal ego? Well, the thing about the crabs versus plankton That's... case is how close it gets the real life law. I should know because I've beaten the bar exam final. Is this an actual lawyer? What's happening? I need context. What the fuck is happening? Hard mode in New York and God mode in California. See, a restaurant owner like Mr. Crab can be liable to his patrons if he's negligent. Negligence requires four things: a duty between the parties, a breach of that duty, causation between the breach and the harm, and damages. Negligence is judged on a reasonable person standard, so his lack of a wet floor sign is pretty bad. And a reasonable restaurant owner would probably put out a sign or not have the floor soaking wet in the first place. But Krabs doesn't owe the same duty to a trespasser like Plankton. Plankton wasn't there to buy food, he was there to steal the Krabby Patty recipe. Therefore, Mr. Krabs probably didn't owe him a duty and wouldn't be liable to him in negligence. But how, how in such a case, how would you decide if he's in there to steal if he's... Or you'd have to have proof that he's not in there as a customer and that he's in there to steal, right? Because if this was during business hours, he could just be in there. He can, um, you know. If Plankton say wasn't I'm faking his fuck. injuries. I'm, I'm sorry, Graham, Graham. I go into far more detail on my own channel where I explain how all of your favorite characters are probably breaking the law. Oh. Otherwise, you can probably... Should we check this out? Should we check this dude out? He, look, he seems pretty fucking cool and I love these fucking court things. I love these intelligence things because my intelligence is so fucking high. I'm joking. I'm fucking... Okay. <laughs> uh, let me know down below. That's not Corona. I swear to God. It's not Corona. Let me know if we should check this dude out. He seems fucking awesome. Find me playing the MMORPG World of Lawsuits in the professional Anthropocene server as Legal Eagle. Oh, rules. he's making a joke. <laughs> Thanks, Legal Eagle. At the bottom of B tier, we have the Starfish the volume? build. The Starfish build is one of those builds which spends very little evolution points leveling its stats, instead pouring all of them into extremely unique abilities. Their first ability is their Suction Cups, an ability they share with the Cephalopod faction. This gives them an extremely strong grip, granting them almost total immunity to knockback moves, and making their own grab attacks borderline impossible to mash out of. That oh, second shit. effect combos nicely into their second ability, their extendable stomach. This unique acid-based grapple attack deals devastating damage to anything it succeeds in catching. It bypasses armor and can defeat enemies far larger than the starfish given enough time. However, it's got a lot of startup lag, so the starfish needs to make sure it's got a secure grip on the target. This ability makes the Starfish one of the best anti-tank builds in the game, since they can pry open the armor of builds like the Clam and Scallop, and then inflict toxic damage, basically melting them from the inside with acid. The Starfish's final and perhaps most impressive ability is their HP regeneration, which is stronger than any other health regen perk in the entire game, being able to completely regenerate their HP from attacks that would spell game over for most other builds. As impressive as the starfish's abilities I did not know that the starfish was this impressive. I thought it was just, you know, pathetic something that just stands there and is pretty cute to look at. Are, its stats leave a lot to be desired, having an intelligence level near zero and a mobility level on par with that of a snail. <coughs> but in the right player's hands, the starfish build can go much further than you might expect. Next on the tier list is the sponge build, the easiest creature to play in the entire game. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm a not a creature. fan of the sponge build, since it's a build catered towards the playstyle of literally AFKing. Sponges gain XP by filter feeding, and thus don't require any decision making or active attention at all to do well. Sponges have a mobility, Wait, attack, that's, stealth, and it helps- That's an actual tank? I, th I thought he was making a joke about a real life sponge and thrown in- Huh. 
towards the playstyle of literally AFKing. Sponges gain XP by filter feeding and thus don't require any decision making or active attention at all to do well. Sponges have a mobility, attack, stealth, and intelligence stat of zero. They don't move, hunt, think, or hide from their enemies. Huh. They just sit there and accumulate free XP from the debris in the water. It's Since they cool, have right? zero ability to react to attacks from enemy players, you'd think they would be easy pickings for everyone, and not fare well at all in the current meta. Normally this would be the case, however sponges are worth negative XP to most other builds, <laughs> because they've incorporated tiny shards of glass into their bodies that damage players trying to feed on them. Some sponges also have an AoE toxic debuff active, lowering wow. the incentive to attack them even further. Some builds, like the Sea Turtle, have resistance to these sorts of countermeasures, and can derive some benefit from attacking sea sponges, but even then, their efforts are better spent on more high-value targets, like jellyfish, snails, and seaweed. So in summary, sponges are upper mid-tier because they simply aren't worth the effort to fight, and their ease of gameplay means they pretty much always succeed in the reef meta. Not exactly a build I'm excited to sing the praises of, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't fairly assess them. I didn't know there was an actual sponge in real life. I thought he was based on a fucking sponge in the water. You know, SpongeBob. In A tier, we've got the Octopus build. Mind blown. The Octopus is a hybrid between a stealth based build and an intelligence based one, having exceptionally high levels in both stats. They've got the shape shift and color change ability that lets them get the camouflage stealth bonus in just about any environment, and their intelligence lets them solve problems using tools and learn new skills by observation. Disappointingly, in the show, Squidward isn't really shown to use the color change ability much. Another thing not the shown in the show is that much. every octopus is at least somewhat venomous. Venom is a powerful tool for taking wow. down prey, and since even a single bite can deal the venom effect for massive damage, venom is also quite effective for pressuring attackers to steer clear. Their suction cups give them a powerful grip, and to be perfectly honest, the octopus is essentially a superior version of the starfish. In addition to having suction cups, multiple arms, regenerative abilities, and venom, the octopus build also gets access to tons of high level abilities like tool use, shapeshift, and inkjet. The starfish does have one advantage over cephalopods, in that its lifespan is significantly longer. The top tier resident of Bikini Bruh. Bottom is... The pufferfish build is a variant on the basic fish class that spends all of its points unlocking not one, but two separate high level defensive abilities and one offensive ability. Those being the spike ball and neurotoxin on defense, and armor piercing beak on offense. The spike ball ability deals damage to the attacker whenever they connect a physical strike on you, and switching to the ball stance also makes bite and grab attacks less accurate against you. This ability is great for countering most of the common threats in the reef meta, and its only drawback is that it reduces the pufferfish's speed while it's active. The pufferfish build doesn't really care about losing speed, since it doesn't really rely on speed for escaping or attacking, so it's a great trade. Its second defensive ability, wow. Neurotoxin, ensures that builds in higher weight classes can't just swallow it whole without risk too. The Neurotoxin would paralyze any player who actually managed to get past its first line of defense. Honestly, having two separate measures of defense is a bit overkill, but considering- And one of you guys let me know in another video that motherfuckers eat this shit in real life. They eat this bitch and that if it's not cooked correctly, it keeps the fucking poison. So you get fucked if- the dude that's making this for you makes a mistake. Congratulations, putting your life in someone else's hands when you don't have to. Why would you do this? Why? Why? That is the question. Why? I swear, people the fish manages to also have a solid offensive capability too. I won't knock it too much. Speaking of, the pufferfish is another extremely effective tank buster build. It tank has buster. teeth that absolutely destroy armor meaning defensive builds like the Clam, Crab, and Snail get demolished in matchups against the Pufferfish. This impressive blend of That's defense kind of and offense makes the Pufferfish one of the best fish builds in the game in my opinion, and easily the top tier of Bikini Bottom. It's no wonder Mrs. Puff is shown bodying basically everyone in the show. Hopefully now you've got a good understanding of the Bikini Jesus. Bottom meta. Also, I hope you like collaborations like this, because a bunch of creators and I have collaborated on an absolutely that. massive project, a brand new platform called Nebula. Nebula serves as a way for okay. creators like Legally. Okay, that was fucking awesome. Should we check the legal guy and let me know who you think is the best character in SpongeBob? And separately, which animal, which fish species of these do you like the most? I don't know, I fucking love oct octopuses. They look fucking awesome. They're smart, they fuck you up, they have poison and shit. I just like them. Anyway. 
That was Tier Zeus, the SpongeBob character tier list. Let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time, everybody. Have a nice fucking day.